Being away from family is definitely, definitely the hardest part. Um, getting, you can get used to the culture, you can get used to the language, you can get used to the money system, you can get used to the people, but being away from family is definitely something that you can't get used to. No, when you know that you're doing the right thing, and every day when you walk back into the old city and you see the surrounding, like you see, you actually see the old city. I'm walking into my house, which is the surrounding, like the stones that, you know, uh, tons of history and things like that. That's what sometimes just, it makes my day. That's how I get through, like when I'm walking. Well, um, learning in the old city is, is, it's a very inspirational thing. I mean, learning by itself could be very inspirational, but the fact that every day, you know, I, I wake up in the morning, I walk by the hotel, and, um, and, and I see Jews, I have all sorts of, type, uh, all sorts of types of Jews coming and, and, and coming to the hotel and just passing through the old city. I mean, it definitely is much beyond, I mean, not just my living, but just the, my life in general. And I really think that it's, it's a very, it hits, it hits home. And yeah, I mean, that's also, it's an incredible thing. Yeah? I mean, we, we as, as modern Jews uh, live a lot in the present and, and what's, going, what's going on now and, and uh, even a lot in the future, but we forget about, about the past and to live in a place like this where you literally see every day the history and you, you even feel the history and, and the people come in and to see the tours always coming through and you pick up little tidbits of information here and there. And it's really, it really is an incredible thing and you really feel more part of a bigger, part of a bigger system here, not just now and later, but also what happened before, so things that it's really hard to connect to. And, it's, it's one of the best places to do it. Um, we do a lot of walking because it's not easy. Like to, Cabbing with her is too annoying. Busting is annoying. So we walk a lot through town to the shuck. So uh, physically, maybe it's not so simple with all the steps and all the stones, but right. um, bumping around. We, get, we make our way through with the stroller. Um, a lot of bumping. Um, I carry her around a lot of times just without anything and people are like, why are you just carrying her? And it's just a lot easier that way. <laughs> yeah. How did I start to make Aliyah? That's a good question. I think it's because of Tequila Wexler. Really? Yeah. Explain that. I decided to make Aliyah, I'm not exactly sure when, but I knew that, it, knew that it's before sixth grade. Um, so... I know that by sixth grade I was already choosing where I wanted to live in Israel. So it was kind of just like a given that like you grow up and you move to Israel. I don't really think I thought about it um, so much. And the reason I say it was probably because of Tehila Wexler was that Tehila was someone that was actually like, you know, going. Mm -hmm. So like it what I guess the fact that I had a friend for whom it was so much part of her reality, it also wasn't something that was in theory, it was something that was practical. So when I learned about Israel or when there were Israelis in school that were my teachers, um, and this was even before the Kola, I think that it, everything just, you know, came together that, you know, to say, of course you're going to Israel. Right. You know, it's, it's not, not like a, it, it wasn't really something you thought about. Like I, I, I guess the past couple of years I was in America. I stayed, I stayed in America through college and also I did two years at Stern and YU. Um, so basically, I was at a crossroads. I could either have chosen to look for a job in America, or to think of another graduate program in America, or I could have come here. And basically, every year, the thought of moving to Israel got harder and harder. So um, watching that progression, like I think it was a harder transition now than it would have been, say, after college, and after college it would have been harder than after me in Israel, I kind of thought that, you know, here I wasn't committed to anything yet, and if I was going to go, I should just do it now before it mm -hmm. got too hard. So that's kind of why I decided now to make Aliyah. <laughs> Oh,
שמה בא וצופה, הצופה בא וצורחת. ארץ ישראל יפה, ארץ ישראל פורחת, אב ישמה בא וצופה. היי שלום, תלמידי בית ספר פוקס מזרחה בקליבלנד. We miss you very, very much, me and Shoshana, my wife. you know, all my life I wanted to live in the Galilee. So when I'll come already to Eretz Israel, back to Eretz Israel, I'll live in the Galilee. Because this Ayishuv, almost a new Ayishuv, only seven, eight years, and... Shoma Shabbos Ayishuv. Ayidish Ayishuv. There's a lot of Torah. A lot of Torah. And only religious people are living here. Yeah. So, so, and it's in the Galil. And it's in the Galil. And I have a daughter and grandchildren here. Let's yes. choose the Galil. No. Take a look. Take a look. All the ark of this can be another Moreshit, right? At least. But if I'm Israel, I can build here a house. It's a cost. My cheap is at eight million dollars. <laughs> I promise you. A huge. And you will have so many Talmidim and Talmidot, you wouldn't believe how many. Let them build the air. Let's call it a sniff. <laughs> Let's start to call it Sniff Bezefer Fuchs Mizrahi in Galil. That's all. How many people? By the way, I don't need a job. <laughs> But I'll come for you that time. And you see, we are standing in Moreshit, in a place that's called Miflezit. The, the, the Miflezit is a place that for children to play. But you don't see here one child now, right? You know why? Because now it's between two and four in noon time. No one is outside. It's quiet. You cannot be outside because it's not allowed. We will make a picture in four o'clock. Rabbi Unterberg will make another picture. You will see how full the children can I know coming for school. All the Galil is mentioned in the Mishnah many, many, many times. Here it became the Mishnah Yod. Here it was written. Here was everything. But and you know what? I'll tell you a secret. When I was in Cleveland, I learned a lot of Gemara. I came to, and I understood. I came in Eretz Israel. I learned the same Gemara. I understand it a hundred times better. Why? Because the Chachamim say so. Avira de Eretz Israel Machim. That I figure out the 70,000 Jews from Cleveland will come here, it will be good. We'll make the business here. We'll make the Kenyonim here, the big malls here. We can make here everything. Just come, just come. And I promise you, you will have such a good time. You wouldn't believe. Every Shabbat you will have chunt and rabbi Lizarovich. You have enough chunt for 70,000 people? We'll manage. No, no. But <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not kidding. There is place for the rest of the world, for everybody. For every Jew. For every Jew. No, especially for the Jews in Cleveland. I'm talking about for Cleveland. Okay. okay. For every Jew of Cleveland, there is a place in Eretz Israel. It's right that Eretz Israel need you. But you know what? You need Eretz Israel more than Eretz, Eretz Israel, Israel needs you. Um, I'm Miriam Zemelman. I graduated from Mizrahi in 2003 after a wonderful 15 years there. Um, I'm currently studying at the interdisciplinary center in Herzliya, which is not a juvenile detention center, despite what my grandmother thinks. Um, when I told her the name of the school, she goes, what? Why? And then I explained to her that discipline can also mean a field of study, which she knew, she just wasn't, wasn't sure. Um, and yeah, that's what I do. I'm studying um, law and government. Um, well, in, in the brochure for, for my school, um, they call the campus secular but Zionist. Um, which, which is a good description. Uh, there are not very many religious people here. There are, um, we're about 120 some in my class, and I think we're maybe uh, four, four religious people. Um, and and it's good. I was very nervous about that at the beginning uh, when I came here last year. Um, and people are really nice, and they um, they're they're certainly respectful of where um, where I come from, and. Um, 
and it's it's good. I um, it took me a while, but now I, I feel very privileged to be able to have those type of those types of discussions with um, with people and and to disagree. Mostly we disagree, um, but just kind of like to bounce your ideas about about religion and life off of people who come from very different places. Which you can say, okay, they're Israeli, they're Jews, whatever. But but you can see their their ideas are very different. Um, I, I feel very privileged to have that experience. My apartment is in Ranana. Yeah, I get to school by bike, um, which is um, one, one of my favorite parts of the day, because it also not only like it's exercise and it's free, um, it also um, I don't know if empowering is the word. Just to come to come here and feel like I could get from from point A to point B where I needed to be, um, you know, in you know, independently, just you know, through my own uh, abilities. Um, that that's a good thing. Um, I actually expected as time went by for it to get easier to be here. Uh, you know, that I would like get used to not being with my parents and used to going once in a while and seeing them once or twice a year. But as, you know, Baruch Hashem, our family grows and things happen in our lives, I think it's getting harder, which is really tough. Um, that's on the one hand. On the other hand, you know, we go to visit my family and when we come back, I mean, it takes me like a week or two to get back into things, but it surprises me each time. It takes me less time, meaning it, Meaning, I miss them a lot, and it's extremely difficult, but I also feel like this is my life. Like, I don't feel like if I went back there, life would be better or easier. It's just hard without, you know, my family. But, you know, I, we really made a life for ourselves. And because of that, you know, it's worth it to be here. So what do you do, like, in your own head? Like, how Say speaking hi! Speaking of which, um, Ma, if you could send us more stretchies, um, that would be really good. because we, Stretchies. Stretchies not, for not cheese. Not cheese. I'm only hearing cheese. No, <laughs> stretchies. No, cheese we got. Stretchies and undershirts. We can't find good yeah, ones here. Yeah, so if you could... The ones here are terrible quality and they We would call you, but everything. this is cheaper, so thanks. You just saved a few bucks. Yeah. Um, when I first started... You know, whatever. I was a new teacher, and first of all, no matter how much I try to pretend that I have experience, these kids pick up on it in a second. They say to me, "So, how's your first year going?" And I say, "What do you mean my first year? This is like my sixth year teaching." <laughs> so they know that I'm fresh off the boat. Um, why um, would you want to stay in Vienna? Why would you? Why would you? We found some. We, we found, no. That's not know. why we decided to stay. We we found some friends, and we liked the location. And, there, and this, yeah, but life, it's gotten a lot better since we have siblings here, and now, you know, Shelly sure. is here, and he's married, and we're, fr and we're good friends, and Yako's here, and it, you know, it makes it much more, makes it feel much more normal that we, you know, we're not all alone. Well, there's three of you here. Yako. We're based, um, family in America, we're outnumbering you here. That's right. I mean, we have one more here. We're it's true. We're You're the, the center of gravity. Yeah. So come and join us, and just don't forget to bring the stretchies. <laughs> right, um, hi everyone in Cleveland. Um, Nomi Wise here from Israel, coming to you from Bar Ilan. Um, it's great. There's a nice um, community of, uh, like, you know, also religious scholars. Um, so it's not like studying subjects like Talmud and Tanakh is nice to do when you don't feel like um, people are coming at it to rip it down. Like, serious in the academic world, but they're also uh, very religiously committed, a lot of them. So that's nice. Uh, uh, it's a really great feeling when you see a lot of folks from Cleveland. I think. Uh, um, Generally, my assumption when I say I'm from Cleveland is people, I'm surprised when people have heard of it. It's kind of like the Demona of like America, but uh, but there are so many Cleveland people that come, and they have such a great reputation that uh, people really are familiar with Cleveland um, as a big source of Aliyah. So it's kind of really disproportionate. So it's nice to see. It's nice to see it around Bar Ilan and just you know around Jerusalem, around anywhere. So so um, my. Boss is a guy called Nahum Eilberg. Um, he's actually related to Rabbi Bernstein. Um, he made Aliyah about a year and a half ago. Um, he was in computer programming and uh, he was really into home improvements. It's important that we kind of are involved in all aspects of our society. You know, not just Jewish policemen and Jewish doctors and Jewish lawyers, but you know, the guy who, you know, who fixes your tap should be a Jewish guy. You know, guy every walk of life. Um, the other day, like some, one of the people we were painting their house, I think, 
I think they were saying that she heard us discussing like a Gemara or something and she was just kind of like that's why I love Israel like you know you've got you know Jewish painters coming in like talking about Gemara or you know a lot of the Tanaim and Amoraim had uh, had actual jobs and and it wasn't like they were just all doctors or all lawyers or you know typically Jewish jobs accountants um, and I think we need to break out of that mold that they're you know that one job is better than another you know um. <sighs> I'm a madman today, that's right.